In the heart of medieval Paris, a city bustling with intellectual fervor and romantic intrigue, blossomed a love story that would echo through the ages. This is not just a tale of love, but of passion, intellect, and a defiance that challenged the very fabric of 12th century society. Meet Peter Abelard, a philosopher and theologian whose brilliance lit up the intellectual circles of Paris. His razor-sharp mind was only matched by his unorthodox views, which both charmed and challenged the academic elite. Enter Eloise, a woman far ahead of her time, whose intellect and eloquence rivaled that of any scholar. In a world where women were often sidelined, her voice refused to be silenced. When their worlds collided, it sparked a love affair that defied social norms, a bond that was as intellectually profound as it was passionately romantic. But society was not ready for such a love, and their story takes turns both tragic and transformative. Peter Abelard and Heloise are among the most celebrated couples of the Middle Ages, known for their love affair and correspondence. Their story, set in 12th century France, blends romance, drama, and intellectual pursuit. Peter Abelard, born 1079, was a prominent philosopher, logician, and theologian. Born in Le Palais in Brittany, he moved to Paris to study. Abelard quickly became renowned for his innovative thinking and teaching skills. He was particularly famous for his work in logic and his approach to theology and philosophy. Eloise, born 1100, was known for her intelligence, learning, and literary talent. She was the niece in charge of Canon Fulbert, a canon of Notre Dame de Paris. Their story begins around 1115, when Abelard became Heloise's tutor. Despite the significant age difference, Abelard was about 15 years older, they fell deeply in love. Their relationship was intellectual as well as romantic, with Abelard teaching Heloise and engaging in scholarly debates. Their affair, however, was not accepted by society and especially by Canon Fulbert. Despite the secrecy surrounding their relationship, Heloise became pregnant, and Abelard sent her to his family in Brittany, where she gave birth to a son named Astrolabe. To appease Fulbert and protect Heloise's reputation, Abelard proposed a secret marriage, which Heloise initially opposed, fearing it would hinder Abelard's career. However, they did marry secretly. Despite this, Fulbert disclosed the marriage, causing a scandal. Heloise then took refuge in the convent of Argenteuil, initially as a safe haven, but she eventually took the veil and became a nun. The relationship took a tragic turn when Fulbert, believing Abelard had abandoned Heloise, arranged for Abelard to be attacked and castrated. Following this, Abelard became a monk at the monastery of Saint-Denis, and later founded the Oratory of the Paraclete, an abbé that he eventually turned over to Heloise. Their correspondence, which began after their separation, is a remarkable mix of personal, philosophical, and theological reflections. These letters provide a unique window into the emotional and intellectual life of the period. Abelard's letters discuss his personal tragedies and his theological controversies, while Heloise's letters reveal her as a woman of deep intellect and emotion, grappling with her status as a nun and her continued love for Abelard. Their story has been romanticized over the centuries, often seen as a symbol of tragic and romantic love. However, their letters suggest a relationship that was as much intellectual as it was romantic, reflecting the complex nature of human relationships and the societal constraints of their time. Abelard and Heloise both died in the 12th century, but their story and writings have continued to fascinate and inspire people through the centuries. They are buried together in a joint grave, and their legacy is often celebrated as a testament to the enduring power of love and intellectual companionship. Abelard was first buried at Saint Marcel, but his remains were soon carried off secretly to the Paraclete and given over to the loving care of Eloise who in time came herself to rest beside them in 1163. They now are presumed to lie in the well-known tomb in Père Lachaise, cemetery in eastern Paris. The transfer of their remains there in 1817 
is considered to have considerably contributed to the popularity of that cemetery.